Welcome to lesson two in my lecture series on the foundations of electrical and electronics engineering, the way I wish I had learned it or that it was taught to me when I was going through university to learn double E. Okay. In my previous lesson, in lesson one, I talked about our agenda, introduction, field propagation, induction cycles, all that stuff, and why this matters, and why it's so important to understand how the field behaves versus standard electronics, the re resistor, capacitor, inductor, all that stuff. We're going to be understanding it from the fields and boundary effect perspective, not the devices and what they do perspective necessarily. No, 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 no. How important it is for EM, being, EM theory being the foundation of your understanding moving forward in electrical and electronics engineering. It's all about the fields. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the unified nature of the electromagnetic field, the creation of fields and what, they, what effect they have, materials and all that stuff, the propagation of the field, and energy transmission. Oh, and if you don't know me, I'm Tech Ed Kirsch. I am a former electrical, I'm a former mid senior, senior electrical and electronics engineer at Intel headquarters in Silicon Valley. I'm also a former adjunct professor, instructor at uni two universities for electromagnetic, electro foundations, the uh, foundation of electrical and electronics engineering, uh, and also of industry printed circuit board design, okay? Also former graduate teaching assistant, former student, and, and also bachelor's and graduate degrees, master's degree, PhD and whatnot that I'm working on, but I finished all my classes already. Power electronics, power systems, former power systems engineer, all that stuff, okay? And this is how I would tackle learning electrical engineering, electronics engineering, okay? So by the end of this lesson, you're gonna understand the basis for inductance and for capacitance and why that matters. So let's focus on the field. First, I want to show you what an electromagnetic field looks like. It is one field, strictly speaking. So when we have one field, it looks like this. I'll play that again. Now think of this electromagnetic field as two feet. It's really one field, but think of the pink part as the magnetic field. That's the color I'll be using to indicate the magnetic field. And think of the blue part as the electric field. They both have different effects. They affect space and time and materials differently. Okay, and we're going to investigate that and why that matters so much. Here's what's actually happening when these fields propagate. And by the way, this field moves through space. It's like how you see that on going on the screen. It moves through whatever material is going through at a certain speed, just like how light goes from the sun to the surface of the earth in eight minutes. It's while it's doing things to the material it's going through, it's also moving at a certain speed. That's going to matter for high speed digital design and timing. Okay, speaking of speed and travel, speed of field propagation in free space for most, well, electromagnetic fields in general is the speed of light. C equals three times 10 to the eight meters per second. The material properties that affect the field propagation, the speed of propagation, how fast does it go? Materials have this thing called permittivity. That affects the electric field, the electric part of this field, the blue part of it, the blue part. Materials also have this thing called permeability, which affects the magnetic field or is affected by the magnetic field, or both vice versa, actually. PCB materials and permittivity. PCB materials have higher, oh, I'm in the way. Okay, my, my face is in the way. Okay. PCB materials have higher permittivity than air. We won't worry about that too much. FR4, if we were to look at PCB materials, I'm gonna show you what's going on here. Let me show you what's going on. Dielectric and the PCB, okay? What is the dielectric and the PCB? It's it's glass, fiber weave, and all that stuff. Let's do a cross-section view. You have circuit copper layer. You have this dielectric layer, aluminum layer, and all that stuff. There's stuff going on in here. There's copper foil, these orange parts on the screen, and also, so that's the copper, the top and the bottom. In between, you have glass weave. In between here, you got, yes, a lot of these images are not the best, honestly. Okay, but in between here, see these brown things? These are your copper. In between here is a bunch of glass. Epoxy resin material, which allows electromagnetic fields to go through them, just like air does. It just has a different permittivity. What is permittivity? 
Permittivity is essentially, okay, here's what's happening with the electric field, okay? Let me show you. Let me talk about permittivity. When a, the electric part of the field goes through air, dielectric material, through glass, whatever, the electric field has a certain effect on that material. The electric field is going to try to polarize the molecules in a certain direction and make them orient themselves to match that electric field, to hold that field a certain way, to store electric potential, okay? See, my, see myself gyrating on the, <laughs> to store electric potential. But to do that, it needs to move certain things around in that material, okay? The dipole effects create the ability for you to store some charge, some energy from how that electric field polarizes and changes things. And the material permits a certain amount of electric field potential to be stored in that material. To Well, let me not say stored, but to it permits a certain amount of the electric field, it, it permits a certain amount of the field to be pushed through or stored in that material. And we call this the permittivity of that material. The permittivity of free space allows, you know, a certain amount of permittivity. The higher your permittivity, as indicated by epsilon r, the more you are permitting, the more you are permitting electric charge storage, energy storage per amount of electric field you have in there, in that material. So think of this as some as free space, as air, whatever, as a vacuum, okay? You can get more electric field storage in there per voltage from that electric part of that magnetic, the electric part of that electromagnetic field. Very important. Let's go to the magnetic field, okay? So dipoles are orienting themselves and that that gives you the permittivity through free, through free space. It gets polarized more strongly, okay? Now let's look at the magnetic part of this field. Okay, I'm going to play this again. This is the electric field doing things to materials. Well, and I said free space, but it's any dielectric. Free space is a type of die is any is an example of a dielectric. Now let's look at this magnetic field. What does the magnetic field have an effect on? It affects the electron spin, the magnetic polarity of subatomic particles in your material. The magnetic polarity. For a lot of materials that are non-conductive, like non-electrically conductive or whatever, say your a piece of plastic or your cup or whatever, they have electrons that can be oriented uh, magnetic poles wise. It's just that they're very random. So this doesn't get magnetized easily at all. Okay, this like this Starbucks, this cup in my hand or whatever. I don't know if I can mention that, but it still happens. You know, it's still affected. If I were to get a core piece of iron, though, those, because they're already aligned, they're already kind of closely aligned, throwing, a, push, pushing a magnetic field through there, it's going to make it easier for those to, for those molecules and for those electrons and their spins to orient themselves and become magnetic, more, more magnetic or ferromagnetic. Anyway, what happens with the magnetic field is it's going to want to orient the poles of your subatomic particles, the magnetic poles, the microscopic level, just like how the electric field is going to want to polarize the orientation, the electric static, the electric orientation of these subatomic particles to store electric charge. Magnetic field is going to want to polarize them. Now, why is this so important? The changing Magnetic field. Let me draw another. Let me draw a piece of material. Let's assume this is an electrically conductive material, meaning it allows free flow of electrons. It allows free flow of electrons. In our earlier example, this is a non conductive material traditionally, non conductive, non electrically conductive. In this one, this is, this is electrically conductive. Stay with me. The magnetic field going through this material or passing through it, so to speak, depending on how easy it is to, for these electrons and everything to orient themselves, we call that a permeability, oops, represented by mu. How easy do, how easy is it for the magnetic field to permeate that material? 
permeate those or the orientation of those subatomic particles magnetically. When you have a changing magnetic field though, when that's changing, it's going to create a, cha a create a changing electric field. So let's call this H1, this changing magnetic field. It's going to induce its own changing electric field called, let's call it E2 or whatever. This changing electric field is going to have an electric field potential effect across the material, across some infinitesimally small or large, or, you know, area in this conductor material. That electric field is going to affect what? These electrons in the material. Because there is a potential difference with the distance and everything in the space, E2, E1, the electrons are going to have a tendency to want to move toward a lower electric field, pot field potential. And then they will start moving. However, there is a problem. What is this problem? Even though electrons are very small, they still hold a charge. They are still, Coulombs are still there. It takes a certain amount of inertia to move these electrons. According to Lenz's law, you're going to have an opposing electromag electromotive force or electromagnetic field effect that's opposing this this change in current. This okay. So let me let me jump back. This electric field is going to cause the electrons to start to move. What are moving electrons? Current. We call it current. This changing magnetic field induces a changing electric field. That electric field is going to induce a current. Those electrons that are moving and adjusting their movement and everything is going to induce their own magnetic field. And we call that H2. In inducing their own changing magnetic field, it's going to oppose the original, excuse me, it's going to oppose the tendency or push for this original, this original electron flow. It's going to induce an opposing current, an opposing electromotive force to resist the flow of change in these electron, in the electron behavior. Okay. Strictly or technically speaking, you have your H2, which induces its own E2 or E3 rather, whatever. That's going to be going this direction. We call this the electromotive force. Okay. And this little pocket here, you know, EMF, whatever, Lenz's law, this resistance to the change of flow of current is natural resistance because of, you know, magnetic field effects and whatever, but this is inertia of sorts. This is energy. And guess what? The more current that you are trying to change the direction of motion to, which, and the more area you're trying to change that current over, the more you're going to have this opposition to that flow of change in current those moving electrons. These induced and opposing electromotive forces, fields, and all that stuff, the effect of those, the proportion to which the resistance to the flow of the change in current is produced, the proportion to which it happens with respect to the original magnetic field, we call this inductance. Meaning it's not the material itself that does this, it's because of the material and its permeability and all that stuff and the fields themselves that are induced and reinduced and opposing it, the fields opposing fields, that we get a proportional oppositional effect on the tendency for the, on, on the desire to move these electrons. These induced fields and how they interact, we call the ratio between them an inductance. The amount of electric energy stored in a material per unit voltage that is changing or what have you in a dielectric material, we call that a capacitance. These are in and of themselves, not like in the materials wise, these are not properties of the materials. No, 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 no. These are ratios, equivalent ratios that we come up with. These are mental models that we come up with to explain the phenomena of the electric field and its dipole and how it affect how easy or hard it is to store energy per the dipole changes and effects likewise for the inductance inductance isn't a duct isn't a some property of a material 
maybe permeability is a property of a material because of the how the atoms and electrons are oriented. Permittivity is a property of the material. The area and the shape of the material such that it would, it would allow so many electrons to flow, such that it would allow so many molecules to have to reorient themselves to the electric field. Those properties of the materials, which then cause a proportional effect on the electromagnetic field and induced electromagnetic fields, those ratios are what matter, those boundary effect conditions. Matter of fact, we can play with these materials, like how long or wide or stretched out or the type of material it is in the first place, to maximize or minimize the effects of the electromagnetic field of that part of the electromagnetic field. So neither component, I have a note here, neither component contains capacitance or inductance as an intrinsic property. They are geometries optimized to exploit the field matter interactions that exist everywhere in the universe. A transmission line has both. I won't jump into that yet. Matter of fact, I will. A transmission line has both distributed because the energy, because the geometry creates both E field in the dielectric material of a printed circuit board and the H field around the conductor of a trace. See, I skipped ahead. Every conductor, whether it's on a printed circuit board, whether it's a transmission line above your head on the power grid, has, has these properties in them that cause an inductance to happen to the electrons in that material. Every dielectric gap has properties in them that, that we call capacitance. Inductance, which we call L, and capacitance, which we call C, are not components. They are not components. These are simply models, ratios, and whatnot on the boundary effect conditions of the electromagnetic field. So, Kirsch, when we have an inductor like this, and when we have a capacitor like this, what are those then? These are just materials that have their geometries manipulated in such a way where we maximize the energy storage, the magnetic field energy storage per amp, or the electric voltage field energy storage, I mean, the electric energy storage per volt. And we can manipulate these materials so dramatically that the magnetic field dominates or the electric field dominates. At higher frequencies, which I haven't even gotten into, at higher frequencies of this field, see if you look at this, the peak of this magnetic field versus the, the time from this peak of this magnetic field to this peak here, that takes a certain amount of time. You can shorten that. If you shorten that, your, your electromagnetic field is operating at a higher or lower frequency, right? If you shorten or lengthen that. At higher frequencies, your neither your L or C neither your L or C effects really dominate. They start to both become important, but that's, that's the down the road discussion. Okay. So I wanted to show you in this lecture, how it's not really capacitor is this and inductor is this. It's more so electric field does certain things to materials always and all materials. Magnetic field does certain things to other material to all materials in the magnetic dipole, magnetic moments and whatever, magnetic polarity, excuse me. And we, depending on how we shape the materials and the type of material we're using, we can create models that maximize the fields themselves, whether we get mostly magnetic or mostly electric. Okay. This, founds, this forms the foundation for moving forward for the rest of the series.